Hey there maths enthusiasts, welcome back to my channel where we explore the fascinating world of mathematics. Today we're diving into the topic of turning points of a cubic function. We'll break down everything you need to know from understanding what a turning point is to finding these critical points on a graph. Let's get started. First things first, let's define what a turning point is. In mathematics, a turning point of a function is where the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. These points are crucial in understanding the overall shape and behaviour of the graph. For cubic functions, which are polynomial functions of a degree 3, we can have up to two turning points. These points are also referred to as local maxima and minima. The maxima looks like a hill, and the minima looks like a trough. Before we dive into turning points, let's visualise what a cubic function looks like. A general cubic function is written as a times x cubed plus b times x squared plus cx plus d, where a, b, c and d are all constants. Cubic graphs can take on various shapes, but they all have the characteristic S-curve shape, which can be more stretched or compressed depending on the coefficients. Let's draw two basic cubic functions to see how they look. Notice the distinct shape and the turning points where the graph changes direction, but also notice one more thing. These two functions have identical terms except the x cubed is positive on the left and negative on the right. This is what determines the direction of the s and whether the hill is on the left or the right. To find the turning points of a cubic function, we need to use calculus, specifically differentiation. Differentiation helps us to find the slope of the function at any given point. For a cubic function, the first derivative is shown on screen. You simply multiply each term by the power of x, then lower the power by 1. For example, on the x cubed term, you multiply the whole term by 3, since the power is 3, and then you reduce the power to 2. This derivative function tells us the slope of the original cubic function at any point x. Turning points occur where the slope of the function is zero. In other words, we need to find the points where the first derivative equals zero. This is where the graph is flat. The derivative is a quadratic equation, and we can solve for x using the quadratic formula, factorization, or completing the square, as normal for quadratic equations. These solutions for x will give us the coordinates of the turning points, so let's go through an example to see. Suppose we have this function that's on screen now. Its first derivative is 3x cubed minus 6x. Setting the derivative equal to 0, we can factorise this and we can quickly find that x is equal to 0 or 2. Now that we have the x coordinates of the turning points, we can find the corresponding y coordinates by plugging these x values back into the original cubic function. For x equals 0, we have y equals 2, and for x equals 2, we have y equals minus 2. So our turning points are at 0, 2, and 2, minus 2. If we plot these on a graph, and remember the s shape that corresponds to a positive x cubed graph, we can easily draw the graph on the right of the screen. And there you have it. We've successfully identified and plotted the turning points of a cubic function. By understanding turning points, you gain a deeper insight into the behaviour of polynomial functions. I hope this step-by-step -step guide helps you in your mathematical journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more maths tutorials, and let me know in the comments what topics you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.